I started writing relatively late compared to lots of poets, not until I was nearly 30. And uh, two things had been happening. Um, one was uh, that I'd been teaching English literature for a long time in an FE college. And so I was teaching poetry a lot, and I started teaching a particular anthology, a survey of English uh, poetry. And there were lots of poems in there that really moved me. Um, things I was surprised that moved me, actually, like um, Gerald Manley Hopkins' expressions of sort of religious devotion. Was, that was a particular uh, poem, God's Grandeur. It made me think, oh, this is amazing. If I could, only I could write like this. And then, at the same time, my mum bought me uh, an anthology, a Blood Axe anthology of poetry called Staying Alive, and of contemporary poetry. And I was reading that and thinking the same thing. But, of course, I also had the subject matter which was that um, I wanted to write about my dad, who had died uh, when I was 22. Um, his life was, had become so interesting to me, and poetry was the medium by which I began to express my thoughts and feelings and ideas about him. But yes, I did feel daunted, yeah, I did. And I certainly didn't feel like I wanted to share what I'd been writing with anyone, because, um, partly because of the kind of deeply personal subject matter these are sort of poems of grief that I, wrote. I was writing, suppressed grief emerging. And um, it took a long time, really, for me to even get up the courage to join a writing class. That was probably two years later. And then it became a running joke when I would bring in uh, one dad poem after another. But what I began to realise was there was an interest in his story uh, and an interest in the way in which I was expressing it. And that, of course, gave me a lot of confidence. Certainly in my writing, and of course this is actually probably the same for prose as well, um, I felt that the kind of, the, the forms of poetry allowed me to revisit things that were painful in the past and perhaps change or contain them. So in the poems that I wrote about my childhood and my relationship with my dad, um, often I was writing in quite tight traditional forms. And when you've got to, when the past isn't immediately accessible to you because memory makes things fade. When you've got to rhyme one word with another or write a line of iambic pentameter, you find that you start making things up. You don't even know you're doing it. As though um, uh, George Surtees, the poet, says the constraints of form are the chief producers of the imagination. So using poetic form allowed me to um, yeah, change or contain some of the pain that I was expressing, I think. And certainly now I feel I've, I've moved on from that. I, I deeply regretted not talking to my dad when he was alive about his life. And so I feel now, having explored his life in so much detail and also shared his life with a, a wide audience, that I can let myself off the hook a bit. So tell us about the collection. Uh, the collection is called Chick, and Chick was my father. It was his, one, of, one of his gambling nicknames. Um, he, was a, he would call himself a professional gambler, um, and he was known to his friends and associates in the gambling world as Chick, or Chan, or Chin. Chin was a Chin the Chinaman, because he was half Chinese, and he was half Chinese and half black Jamaican. And he came to Britain in 1947, before the Empire Windrush, he was one of the, you know, the first uh, Caribbean uh, men to come in that post-war period. And gambling was the only thing that he ever did. And of course, prior to 1961, I believe, that was an illegal occupation and continued to be illicit and dangerous throughout his whole life. Um, so in the book, I explore my memories of his lifestyle and activity. He was always very cloak and dagger about the whole thing. He would disappear off to dinner, um, after dinner to go and, you know, often to see a man about a dog were his words. But he was, uh, six nights a week, he'd be playing cards and dice in the East End. It's had a complicated perception, really. Um, my mum is certainly kind of very proud of me and pleased to see my dad, like, immortalised in her words. Um, but it's more complicated for my brothers, I think, who have a different uh, memory of him. He was a complicated man, uh, particularly my, my um, uh, brother closest in age to me told me recently he's only just bought himself to read the book. <laughs> so anyway, I'm glad that he's read it. Uh, I often think about what my dad would think about the book, you know, whether he would be pleased to see himself 
drawn in these ways and whether he'd be horrified that I'd exposed him as a card shark to an audience. <laughs>